Hello everybody, Glycan here for some Friday Night Magic. Uh, we're doing another Oath Draft, and here... I think in Embodiment of Fury is going to be the pick. To me it's between Embodiment of Fury and Cultivator Drone. Cultivator Drone is more of the deck that I like to play, but Embodiment of Fury is just a very powerful card. Um, this card isn't awful uh, for Ruins of Orn Reef. I tend to I would, like if it comes around i would probably pick it up but it's not uh, that I'm, nothing i'm looking to first pick um so yeah with that we're gonna go with this and buy the fury Two, yeah. havoc's over is a pretty strong card um nothing necessarily in red to go with our embodiment of fury so we're probably just going to take this havoc's over here uh definitely like if we end up in a uh, black colorless deck, we're definitely wishing that we had taken that Cultivator Drone first pick. But, Spiderman Fury is just going to be the stronger card in that regard. Um, Stalking Drone is also a decent card. Uh, Dwar Isle Avenger isn't Dwar Isle Avenger isn't awful. But, uh, Havoc Sowers, I think the strongest pick here. Do... We have a reality hemorrhage. Uh, you can start getting some colorless land cards with a crumbling vestige, which isn't my favorite. I like the ones that always give you an option to tap for a color, like the uh, Unknown Shores or the other one. Um, so here my pick is actually between reality hemorrhage and gravity negator. I think we're just going to stick with the colors that we do have and take the reality hemorrhage. Do here we have another reality hemorrhage? Um, reality hemorrhage just does kind of go down after a few picks. So again, it's between if this were if this were a different one of the couple of slants, I probably would take it. But we'll just stick with the reality hemorrhage again. There's also just not that much in this pack at all. Do -do -do. Maybe I want. Maybe I just want to start taking a crumbling bus just for a havoc sower. Um, I'll take the reality hemorrhage. Here I'll take a moth Kozilek. Um, now that we have multiple cards that have colorless activations, uh, we're definitely going to be looking to pick up some colorless lands within the next few picks. Uh, but we'll take Azazel's Commando over it, because Azazel's Commando is just one of the best two drops in red. If not, I think it's actually the best two drop in red. Yep, and that's what we're going to go with. We are missing up on another Maw and a Crumbling Vestige, but this card is just so strong. Even if you don't get allies to work with it, uh, it on its own is just strong enough. Here we're going to take a Gravity Negator. Uh, it's just one of the stronger cards in the pack, or we could also take the Relentless Hunter. I actually think I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with the Relentless Hunter in case we end up uh, uh, red-green, because we only have one black card currently. And also, if we get the uh, better colorless lands, they'll be able to help us fix to be able to splash either of these cards. So yeah, we'll go with the Relentless Hunter here. Kind of hedge a little bit. Take the Akum Flame Seeker oh, or the Kozlek Shrieker. Hmm. Akum Flame Seeker is very good. We only have one ally to go with it currently, where it looks like we're trying to be a colorless themed deck, so we might just want this Kozlek Shrieker, which has been better and better. So it looks like we're going to be leaning towards a black red aggressive colorless deck. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go with the. We'll hedge and go with the Shrieker. Now picking up colorless lands is going to be a very big priority. Uh, we'll just take the Cinder Hellion here. Could potentially take the Expedite, hoping to get like a Boulder Salvo or something later on, but I think we'd rather just the body. I 
Um, here we're going to pick up the wastes. Again, there's the option for Expedite and the Untamed Hunger, but we at least... Uh, this will make Evolving Wilds a stronger pick in the Battle for Zendikar pack, as well as we now have at least one source of colorless mana. Granted, it's the last source that we possibly want, but it is a source all the same. Now here I'll pick up the Expedite. That just gives us, like, it's essentially a free card for the most part. Um, when we end up heavy red, if we need, like, a 23rd card, we'll throw it in. Here we'll just take the, again, we'll just take the body. The fact that we're only seeing black and red cards, despite the fact that they're not the best black and red cards, is a good thing. that means that people are picking up dregs of other colors to protect me from seeing them. Here I'll pick up Witness the End, perfectly serviceable card. It definitely isn't one of my favorite strategies of decks. Um, I'm definitely, like, if I want to be red, I want to pair it with white or green. If I want to be black, I want to pair it with blue. Uh, but we haven't been the biggest, I love that art. This is my favorite mountain art. Um, but I haven't been the biggest fan of what comes from a black red deck. Oh, well, mirror pool is a color card. There's also the Sphinx. There's also just another Havoc Sower and a Bushwhacker. Um... This is actually an interesting pick. To me, it's between the Mirror Pool and the second Havoc Sower. Um, but I think we just want the Mirror Pool. Because the Mirror Pool can also just turn into a second Havoc Sower. It has a lot of more versatility, and we're just looking for more uh, colorless sources for our deck. Definitely not a, the strongest pack 2 pick. Could be right just to be taking the Havoc Sower here. But... We, de we are definitely lacking in colorless sources, and they def they also dry up a lot in the Battle for Zendikar pack, so we're going to take the Mirror Pool, um, and hopefully one of these three cards come back, maybe even the Brute Strength. Uh, here we're going to take the Essence Depleter. Uh, this is just a very strong card. We wouldn't mind getting this Kozlux Chandler back. Um, don't have enough allies to really take Drown's Chosen, but Essence of Bleeder is definitely a card that we want to see. I didn't realize that Foil Sphinx of the... All of this just makes this more of a... competitive draft. Here we'll take the Unknown Shores. Now that we have multiple cards that... like, multiple cards that we want to be sinking Colorless Mana sources into, uh, we're really going to want these... Those lands. Flame Tendrils also is an awful pick. Uh, Hero Take a Zada's Commando. Be pretty happy about it. Not much else for us here. This is kind of a deck that wouldn't mind a Sky Scour, but still not happy that take. Still wouldn't be too happy to take it. So yeah, we're just going to take a Zada's Commando. The unintentional not realizing that Foil Sphinx was a seven ticket card. Because I am human. I will try and get magic cards to pay for the draft. But I guess if I don't realize it, then I won't. There's Honest Commando. Easy pick up here. Do -do -do. Now I have three color sources, which we're pretty happy with. Um hopefully you get like me hopefully you get the uh translator back. Oh, Walker of the Waste here. I think we actually do. I think we don't mind taking the Walker of the Waste here. Uh, we do have the one ways to try and make it a 5-5. Five five. This could be a deck that wants more waste, especially now that we have it. And just like a 4-4 four four trample, a 5-5 five five trample is perfectly fine. 
Uh, otherwise, I would there's the reality hemorrhage and the gambit. I would probably take the gambit over the third reality hemorrhage. But I'm gonna try this card out. I have yet to actually play this card. Wow, that is a late embodiment of fury. We are going to pick that up. Um, here we'll take another unknown shores. Just keep our couple of sources open. Um, fruit strength or waste. I think since we have the walker of the waste, we might just want this waste. Let's go for it. Ooh, happy to see a mob of Kozilek come back around. Do, do I have to choose this cloak for this guy? And it goes well with the Zaza's Commando. Or I could take the Gambit. I think we're all... We're all there's, a, there's a world that I see us playing the Chitinous Cloak. Especially if we have two of those guys. I don't think our deck necessarily wants it. But we'll see. It also is colorless, so it'll be easier to cast. We're not going to play this Relentless Hunter. And again, if we get, like, an insane mana pool, we'd be able to have a Relentless Hunter. Here, we'll take a Rolling Thunder, because it's still a very good card. Or we could take the Smoldering Marsh and just help fix, but I think we just take the Rolling Thunder here. Um, but I was saying, with Relentless Hunter, if we have, like, a colorless activation source, we pay the colorless mana. This involves having, like, seven mana up. Pay the colorless mana, bounce the colorless land, play it, and then pay it again. Taking Rolling Thunder. Would not mind at all to see the Smolly Marsh come back around. In fact, if most of this pack comes back around um, that we would want, I'm probably taking the Smolly Marsh. I don't actually think I'd take anything else in this pack over it. Maybe the Skitter Skin. But I don't think so. Uh, we could take this Turn Against or Bear. You could take turn again. Break of Army is also very good. But we are not really a big mana deck. And this is going to be a more aggressive card for that kind of situation. So yeah, we'll take this turn against. Do, do, do. Boiling Earth or Grave Birthing? Not the decision you want to be making. Uh, we're going to take this Boiling Earth. Actually, oh wait, no, we want Grave Birthing. Uh, Great Birthing gives us a couple of source. Also helps us draw through our deck. Um, gets us ramped to our bigger cards. Yeah, we want Great Birthing. Omnath. You want this Invoker. Having one of these cards in your deck is just always good. It gives you an option late game. Uh, if things just turn to a stall, this can win the game. And now we have two cards that will be able to do it in uh, Essence Depleter and the uh, Invoker. Radiant Flames or Hard Removal? I think we need the Hard Removal. Yep, we want the Hard Removal. Fire Mantle Mage or Valica Predator? Aww, that's actually an interesting choice. Or the Myers Malice. It's one of these two. I think we just want the Valka Predator. Because it's scarier faster. Um, I guess we just take another two drop. Um, if we end up against an aggressive deck, that we'll be happy to be trading these off because I'm pretty sure that we're we're strangely trying to be aggressive. Like we want to be aggressive early and then late game, like just drain them out with our couple of options. But if we end up against a deck that's more aggressive than us, we'll bring in the reckless cohort. Uh, second Stone Fury over to Kozilek Sentinel. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, because we have answers for early game, and the first strike in Urzada's Commando as well as Reality Hemorrhages. 
So it's the later game threats that we're afraid of. See how many cards are we actually looking at here? We're at twenty six. Probably not playing this expedite. Um, probably don't want the cloak pass it package. Don't want this witness the end. Take this looming spires. Oh, this is this is the pack that had the potential of everything. I'll take the looming spires. Um. So be looking to currently cut one more. It's either going to be the cloak, but since like currently we're running both of these toll collectors, and so the cloak is actually working pretty well with them. Grave birthing, I still like. Could be this turn against that we just don't want. Turn against Cinder Helen and Walker of the Wastes. I feel like Walker of the Wastes is going to be too much of a liability in our deck. Like we can't, we want our, we want a lot of our uh, colorless mana to be optional, where this has us both need it and want our worst mana. I think we actually cut the walk of the wastes. And currently this is our deck. Um, given that we only have a couple picks left, this is probably going to be our deck. Pending mana base. Um, not the looming spires or a sure strike. I can see us wanting a sure strike. We want a lot of our mana to come. Since we we're playing a decent amount of uh, colorless sources, we want a lot of our mana to come play untapped so that we would be able to cast our spells on curve. Probably running both the wastes. One, two, three, four, five colorless sources. Which I think we cut one of the wastes. We want to be mostly red. Like, we would be 10-7 if we were just a straight two-color deck. So we want to be... So many color sources. Maybe we actually want one less color source. Hmm. Yeah, that's an actual playable card. You want to play that over that? I don't think so. For sure, we want nine red sources. We do only have four black cards. We could just straight be a mono red deck. We should bring this in. This in because we play it. A sure strike and probably like the reckless cohort. Like that is an option. I I think these cards are just strong enough that and not necessarily the great birthing, but great birthing action might be weak enough that we take it out for something. In. No, because it gives us just another color source. Yeah, so I think we want... We definitely want nine red sources. Which gives us... We definitely want to play at least these three. It gives us five black sources. And there are unknown shores. Like, given that we have such few black cards, the unknown shore is actually really... And our black cards don't cost that much, so our unknown shores really count for a black source. So I think we actually play a waste and five black sources. So there's like five and a half black sources. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Eight red sources should get us there fine. We have the double red later on. But all of our early plays. One, two, three colorless sources. The only things we want to be activating colorless multiple times. Three, four colorless sources are. Well, really just these two. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and a half. I think we want to cut those wastes for the uh for the mountain. Yeah. Yeah, and I think this is gonna be our deck. Um nine red sources, five black sources, and then the uh, three colorless sources for our things. Definitely not the deck I'm happiest with, but we'll see where it gets us there. Maybe we'll just like stall the game up to a Rolling Thunder to the face. Um, and with that, we'll see you for round one. Mm -hmm.